Hey gardeners, Lindsay here with the Mindful Living Movement and I was just harvesting mint and also my lemon balm in the back here. I was about to bring it inside to hang it to dry to make tea and medicinal things and the root ball that is here was going to end up getting put into the ground and I just discovered when I was harvesting my lemon balm that my lemon balm at least is actually quite infested with mealybugs and when I started looking through the mint they're there they're just at the very beginning so it must have started with my mint plant or with my lemon balm pardon me and then was spreading out from there so I'm pretty bummed about that and I wanted to talk about what I've decided to do about it because yes you can get rid of mealybugs and if it was on my house plants I would put in the effort and the time to do it that's a lot of mint that I would really love to make into tea for the winter. However, bringing all of this inside, hanging it to dry, just pretty much guarantees that I'm inviting mealybugs into my house. Same thing with the lemon balm. So this is all gonna end up going into the community compost bin. I'm not gonna put it in my own compost bin because I don't want to encourage this to keep going. And unfortunately, because it kind of starts usually from the ground up um, the base of the plant that's kind of where the mealybugs are hanging out the most in the lemon balm and I'll try and give you a close look at that but both of these that I had hoped to put into the ground and become perennial plants um, in one sort of perennial area that I have in my yard that's just not going to happen so I've decided that my time my energy and just possible risking of infesting both indoor plants and outdoor plants and just kind of keeping it going in my yard is just not worth it so this is all going to basically go, not in the garbage, but I'm gonna send it off to the community compost. Hey gardeners, quick pause. There are exciting things in the works. We're at the end of our gardening season here and I'm curious, what have you discovered about your garden? Are you feeling like perhaps your garden could have been more successful than it really was and sort of wondering what you might be able to do in order to have a best season next year? Well, I'm here to ask you if you've ever considered about learning about gardening over the winter time. Now, honestly, learning gardening over the winter when we're not gardening is probably the best time to do it. It gives us all sorts of space to learn and figure out what the ideal actions are that you would want to take for what you want out of your garden. Every single one of us has a different garden. We're different gardeners and we want different things out of it. So it can give you some space to sort of hum and haw and figure out what your next season could potentially look like. Learning over the winter is also a really good idea because it takes a lot of the overwhelm out of situations that can happen where you're in the middle of a drought and you can't figure out how to get enough water into your garden to keep the plants happy or you wanna go away on holidays and you don't want your plants to die you're concerned about weeds or the weeds are taking over your garden. How much fertilizing do you need to do? When, how, pruning? There's so many questions that can come up in the middle of the season. And a lot of times by the time we identify that we need to be doing something, it's too late. We probably should have already taken action on it. And so this is why I have created a gardening season bundle of courses, take you right beginning to end through the whole course. And why I think learning over the winter time is amazing for time management in the garden. I call myself a lazy gardener because I try to do everything I possibly can to garden as big as I can in the most efficient manner as I can. And so these are things that I share with all of the gardeners that I work with, including how to manage our time better in the garden. So if you are thinking that it sounds pretty good and you might be interested in learning about gardening over the winter time, there is a link in the bio to my gardening course. This is a self-led version of my courses that you can take over the winter time. So if you want to learn how to have more harvests, if you are curious how to expand your garden for next season, whether it's figuring out what those best spaces are to put the garden, the materials to use, what varieties actually you should be growing for your zone and your space and your time and even your preference for flavors, this is exactly for you. Now you can even learn how to indoor seed start and this is a good one to get all the knowledge we need way before we actually need to be happening because gardening is something that has to happen at specific times and if you're interested about starting a lot of your own plants indoors then 
indoor seed starting is definitely the way to go, but we need to learn way ahead so that we can actually start those seeds at the right time. So I've got a whole module in there about that if you're interested in doing that, because that can save you a ton of money when it comes to buying plants in the springtime. So the bundle is made up of three phases, as I said, beginning to end all the way through the season. You've got it available to you online on demand to learn over the winter time, and then it's there for you forever. So come back to it during the summertime, rewatch any videos you might need to, even on the little handy little app that comes with, you can take it right out into your garden as you're working through things. So if you are thinking that you want a better garden next year and you're jumping up and down because you had a taste of some of the things that could be successful in your garden and you want a lot more of it, this is for you. Check out the link in the bio. There's lots of details there. You're also welcome to drop in the comments any questions, send me an email. I hope to have you join us over the winter time as we prepare for a even bigger and more beautiful gardening season next year. Back to our regular scheduled programming. <laughs> Both of these are going to get yanked and they're going to go in the same place. And the dirt that is coming out of this, um, there's a sort of very far back corner of our yard where we don't really grow anything and kind of just is sort of a holding place for stuff. So that's kind of where this soil is going to go. And both of these pots are going to get washed and bleached because I don't want eggs and things like that to possibly carry forwards next year. And then pots just stored away and ready to go for gardening season next year. So unfortunately, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you notice that there's a big infestation and you just have to sacrifice plants. So that's what I've decided to do here. If you've come across this before or if you've had really good success quickly dealing with a mealybug problem outside, I would really love to know. Drop it in the comments. Um, I'm deciding to not bother with it because it's just too risky bringing all of this stuff in, in the house. I'm already bringing lots of harvest and things in the house and inviting, you know, probably unintentional bugs in, even though I'm washing things really well anyways. Knowing that I have an infestation and bringing it into the house, that's just no go. So I hope you guys are having better luck with most of your garden. Most things in my garden are going well. There's always going to be something. Have a beautiful rest of your day and we will see you soon. Mm -hmm.